Hi, this is Mike Hibbert back with another Python Django tutorial for you. Um, as promised, this time round we're going to be covering um, Django template language um, so that we can now start to manipulate the output of the data that we've been storing in our database. So uh, just to recap on our last previous lesson where we, we touched um, very lightly on template and language, um, we basically set up these two pages where we'd list all of our uh, articles in the database and then we made a link so that you could click through and view each one individually and you can see there that since then I've went and put some more lorem ipsum in there just to just to pad out the, the articles a bit more and and uh, for, for something else that I'm going to show you shortly so uh, with this we're then now going to make a slight little change to our project because our project used to keep all the templates in the main project folder so we used to go inside of this templates folder here for all our templates now as we've been doing in previous um, tutorials we've been modular modularizing um, our article app and this time we're going to modularize the templates also so we're going to bring in the templates into the apps folder rather than keeping it inside of our project folder here we're going to bring it into the app folder so that the, the templates inside of this app are stored separately from everything else so that they can be kept in, in a nice single package that we can drag in and drop in any other uh, you know any other project that we fancy in the future include our templates as well as our code which is very very handy so we've moved our article and articles HTML templates that we created in our previous example there's one other thing we need to do um, we need to tell Django that we've also included a new folder into the into the project where we're going to keep these templates and the way we do that is we go into our settings.py and if you go to the section that says template underscore dirs then we've got our initial setting which we had and then we're going to add this extra setting here which just basically is the extra path the extra path to the extra folder that we're going to use. Once that's the case and you start your server then Django will be quite happy to search in both of those folders and look for templates. And the reason why we're going to have set two separate folders is I'm going to demonstrate something later on called template inheritance which allows you to have basic set of templates for your your whole project which can be applied to smaller templates which apply specifically to apps that you're using within your project and, I'll, and that might not make sense right now but I'm going to demonstrate it and you'll be able to see that's actually a really cool thing to do and saves you a lot of hard work so with that we've, we've set our settings and we don't need to do any more changes in the framework all we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at our templates so our articles template this is the one that's shown here so the one that just lists our articles um, is exactly the same as it was previously where we have a for loop saying for article in articles so for every article in this articles array or list uh, do the following output some HTML with the article ID in this reference and then the title inside of the hyperlink and then some of the body text underneath and then using the same format the curly brace and the percentage sign and this percentage sign and the curly brace we use end for just to say that this is the whole section that the, the for loop covers within that we've got a variable name and remember when we when we were in certain variable names we don't use these particular braces because they're to signify something in terms of logic or something more complex we use these 
which is just two curly braces and another at the other side just to signify that's that this is the end of the declaration of where we want this variable to be dropped in so variables two curly braces anything else that's uh, in terms of logic like if statements or for loops that's with the curly brace and the percentage sign so right now what we're getting is the title with a hyperlink and then a lot of text underneath because we're also outputting the body say we wanted to be more brief and we wanted to have um, a much more simpler display we had less space to, to deal with there's a way that we can then um, alter the way that these variables are being output into the HTML and these are called filters now a filter um, can do many things there, there are lots of filters and you, I'd advise you to go and, and do a bit of Google searching on, on Django filters if you want to know the whole full list but a couple or two or three useful ones or interesting ones that I'm going to show you now um, just demonstrate the point along with this and they are um, the lower filter the truncate words filter and I'm going to show you the upper filter as well um, just a word about the structure if you want to apply a filter you use the pipe and then the filter name if you want to add another filter on top of that it's another pipe and then your filter name if your filter has um, arguments to send to the filter it will need a semicolon sorry a full colon and any of the arguments that you should send to that filter so in the case of us we're saying apply this filter lower which will turn everything lowercase and then apply this filter truncate words which will shorten the sentences given that there are 10 words in there it'll go once I get past 10 words I'm going to stop printing any of the text that, are, that comes out with this variable and put three periods on the end so with that applied those filters should then shorten this bit of text so let's have a go and there you go that's made it a nice summarized version and obviously if you want to click you get the full story afterwards which is a common thing that you do in websites okay so that's the basics of filters um, like I say if you want to know about different ones uh, you know or what's available go ahead and google it then the, you know you'll get a nice list of them then and you can kind of pick and choose which ones you think are more appropriate to yourself but there's an example of a couple of filters just to quickly um, go and use upper instead of lower um, three guesses what upper does it turns everything to upper case so they're dead handy and save you a lot of hard work in coding because I imagine that if you had to do that by yourself um, potentially it would be a couple of lines of code whereas you're just adding one word with a pipe on there so that's really good so what's next how about the if statement so how do we how do we test if things are true and, and whether they should be displayed or whether there should be some, f some form of action during, during our template. Well, the way that we do that is to use the, the curly braces and the percent as we explained earlier for anything that's with logic. So we go curly braces if and then we do our test. So in the case of our test, I'm saying if articles dot count. So if the amount of items that are in the count in the, in the articles list are greater than zero do the following and then i'm going to add an extra bit to the end which says else or if that's not true if there are if the count isn't greater than zero put a none to show message out and then finally i end that with the end if tag so that's basically the way that you would declare an if statement and of course if I did it right now 
it still shows all three. However, if we just slightly um, redid that, if the count is less than zero, do the following. If not, say none to show. Well, no, that's not going to be true. So that should say none to show because our if statement test has resulted in being false. I'll just set that back to normal. So, what's next? Well, next we're going to take this site that we've been building and we're going to apply an overall design to it. Now, I'm not a web designer, so I'm not going to show you a nice pretty design. What I'm going to show you is a, is a template that I've created, which is inside of our Django project templates folder not inside the article templates folder but the, the actual project templates folder and I've called it base.html and the reason why I've got that there is because this will be the basis for every part of the site and how it will look so what's in there well um, we've got in there uh, standard opening tags for opening HTML. I've got something about the title. I've got a little bit of styling just to make it look like, or just to make it more obvious later on which sections are which. And in our body, I've inserted a few divs just to add structure to the page but then I've added these new things here now like I said curly braces in a percentage means something more complex than just a variable name so block tells the templating language that this section of the page is going to be named sidebar and then everything in between here can be substituted by other templates as long as they refer to a sidebar as a block within their template and further down we've got a block called content and we end block there because we haven't got any content in there so um, let's just put something in there this is the content area right now if we just look at this straight away in a browser what you've got is you've got a sidebar with articles and admin in it and then you've got a content area block content area this is the content area so this is the basis for the whole layout of the, the site. We've defined these blocks so that the template language can then um, replace that content by any other templates that choose to override these areas. So for instance, um, say in the, this content area, if this was the front page, we might just have an image and a welcome message. And in one of our templates, we would use the we would use the base template but then override the content block and say insert an image in the cases of our um, articles we're going to override the content block of this page part of the page here and insert these into the content block so this area here gets overridden by other templates that can inherit this template. Um, so if you think of template inheritance as a way of smaller templates taking advantage of already existing functionality that you've written in different in, in previous more complex templates. So how does that look? 
when you actually come to use it. The way that we tell our the Django templating system that we want to use that base HTML in our articles HTMLs is we go this page on the very first line of this template by the way because it, it has to be on the first line when you're dealing with this one specific command we say this template extends the base HTML template how does it extend it it extends this block it extends this block the content block so we're saying this content block is extended to use what's inside of our content block in this template so we've inherited all of the layout and the CSS and everything that we've put in our base HTML just by saying that this extends that and that this block here overrides the original content block so let's just take a look at what happens when you do that there you go it takes the original surround and template and inserts everything inside of there because that's the one that's the block we chose to override so what about what about our articles page and we haven't applied it to there so let's go back to our articles template and we're going to do exactly the same thing we're going to say extends the HTML base and we're going to redeclare the block and, and and override it so there we go extends block content edit block <clears throat> so um, another block we could override is if we just cut and paste that out there is we could stick in between there our block that we've already created in the other template but this time we don't need the admin so we've overridden both blocks the sidebar block and the content block for our article page so let's go and see what happens when we do that there you go so it puts our text for our content area inside of the content part of our system of our template and then we override our left hand menu or sidebar with only one link in instead of two and that's all drawn from one basic template that we set up for both pages and as you can see the beauty is that obviously we've written all of this text here for the basic template but for the other ones we have not to rewrite anything we've just basically imported it all so to speak or, or overrided it and told it that you know the rest of the stuff that comes inside of here is what should be inserted and that's what we mean by template inheritance this template from articles inherits everything from base and then we can extend it some somewhat so that's the basics of Django template and language if you enjoyed this video and it was instructional for you um, please click the like button if you'd like to know more then uh, please subscribe to this channel and you'll get notifications every time there's a new uh, a new tutorial out there thanks for watching